Uh, let's start with what everybody starts with in the nonprofit space, with an, which is an individual employee, and that's going to be the executive director. All right. Okay, yeah. and that's an individual, and that's going to be regular labor because we're not paying them hourly. They're going to be on staff because we want them to have benefits and all that good stuff. So you see how Josh has clicked on those two. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to pay them. Um, I can never do do the division in my head. So let's make it easy so it comes out for a month and say we're going to get we're going to pay them one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. All right. And again, uh, we'll start January twenty two. Yep, and we're humane, so we're going to give them an annual raise. You know, we're going to give them cost of living, so call it 7%. And then there's also a place in here where the um, the burden rate comes in, isn't there, Josh? Yep, that'd be right here. So okay. we're under personnel here, still under financial tables. And then we clicked on add personnel, which is what we built out. But we can also look at burden rate. Um, so for those of you, those of you who aren't familiar with burden rate, that is also often referred. Ah, see, look at this, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, these guys are good. So without reading the screen, what we're talking about here is what is often referred to as fringe or overhead. This is your payroll taxes, your employment taxes, your health insurance, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we default to a 20% burden rate, which is fine. So just want to make sure you see that and what that happens then. I think you can exit here, Josh. Mm -hmm. um, what happens then is you notice that you've got additional money here. So you've got the salary, but then you've got this thing, employer related expenses. That's the burden rate. And once again, it's calculated for you automatically in the background. So nobody has to fiddle with mm -hmm. how that works. All right. So well, now, real quick, go ahead. Just just to show a feature while we're here is, um, you know, for, for someone who was coming in from the outside looking at this, you know, we could always say, you know, click here, add a note, and then say, you know, burden rate is set at 20%, you know, for example. So you can really put in any notes that you'd like, but since we're talking about that, it's just a good example of one of the functionality features of the tool is you know, somebody is like, well, where did you come up with that? Well, it's a 20% burden rate. And the bigger point here is that this is another place where students in particular don't think things all the way through, not because they're incompetent, but just because they haven't been trained because they say, all right, I'm going to pay him 120000 and you see 120000 show up as a salary and you say, now, wait a minute. You know, there's this thing called payroll taxes. There's this thing called social security contribution. Right. You know, I remember, you know, when, when you were very, very young and you got your first real paycheck and you look down at the pay, and he's like, who is this guy, FICA? And why am I paying him anyway? Right. So that's that's what that's all about. All right. We ready to add another employee? Uh, yeah, let's do that. I also while I'm sort of hovering over here on the right, I'd gone to the notes, which we just highlighted. We also have this premium feature with premium live plan that is a forecast metrics so it'll generate an update as we're building this. Uh, we don't necessarily need to focus too much on that, but just always like to point out a few few new things here and there. So, absolutely. Uh, All right. So we got an executive director, but we also need a trainer, mm -hmm. and that's going to help these person get the job skills that they need. They're mm -hmm. also going to be regular labor. They're also going to be on staff, and they probably need to start close to the beginning of the year because you got to train people if you're going to get your fees. So mm -hmm. let's say we're going to pay them $90,000 a year. And again, we're going to give them a 7% annual raise. Yep. And as you can see, all of a sudden now we've got 250,000 in expenses. Once again, the employee related expenses have gone up and as you can see, you get the raise every year and it projects everything out. Nice and clean. Let's go back and add one more staff member for now, and then we'll get into some expenses. So let's say because things are going well, we're growing, we add a second trainer. So we'll call them trainer number two. Mm -hmm. That's another individual. It's another regular labor. It's on staff. We're going to pay them 
85,000, but we're not going to start them until the second year because we don't need them until the second year. Same 7% raise. There you go. There you go. Now, let's go back to our um, our P and our, our uh, profit and loss for a second here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got a problem, don't we? And we haven't even put in rent or insurance or any of that stuff. And already you can see we're running out of money five years down the road. This, my friends, is why you do these exercises and also why you can create multiple iterations. So you can put an iteration in that says, okay, this is what I actually think is going to happen. And then you can put another iteration into play with and go back and move things around. Thank All you right, sir, so for clicking on that. No, go ahead. Talk through that. Oh, oh I was just going to say, so when you're confronted with this, you know, obviously we're not even complete yet, but uh, the either we need to reduce expenses or increase income in order to make that uh, out of the red. So, you know, what do we do? Right. So let's uh, go back to expenses. Financial tables. Okay, we had personnel. Now we got expenses. Right. So we need to add expenses. So one of the things we got to pay is rent. So rent's a pretty stable amount. Happens once a month. Let's say we're paying $1,500 a month in rent, which is probably cheap. And you can see right down there, it's got rent or lease. That's what it is. All right. Mm -hmm. There's another expense. Now we probably have uh, utilities to pay, especially because we're job training. So let's say we pay $1,100 a month in utilities. And that's going to be other expense. There we go. And you can see, once again, that long-term forecast feature, we're just falling deeper and deeper into the hole. But hey, you know, this stuff happens. Yeah. Right? You're training people and you're training folks who have got a background. So insurance is not going to be cheap. So we probably need to get some insurance. So we need to add another expense for insurance. And let's say the insurance costs us $1,000 a month. That's another expense. All right. So without going too deep, especially because I'm looking at the clock and I want to leave some time at the end, you can see that we're in trouble here. So what do we do? Well, now, now we're out of we're out of business after I can't tell. It's 2024. Okay, it's just just barely a positive number. Yeah. <laughs> just barely a positive number. So, okay, what do we do? Well, maybe we need to have a fundraiser. Maybe we need to do a um a charitable solicitation. So let's go back to revenue stream and add a revenue stream that says, let's call it a fundraiser. All right. So that's going to also be revenue only because it's charitable donations. And let's say we raise yeah, varying amounts over time. We're not going to get this until the second year because we have to prove what we're doing before people are going to give us money to fundraise. So let's say we raise $60,000 from a fundraiser. Okay. Now things look a little better on the revenue side. Still haven't solved the P&L problem. We're still alive in year three. So, you know, maybe we need to do a fundraiser every couple of years. Maybe we need to do a grant every couple of years. And I don't want to spend too much time going through the various scenarios on here because I think we've illustrated our point in terms of how this all works. And once again, we haven't even gotten to assets or taxes or any of the other stuff that's in there. Um, you know, at some point in time, maybe we need to expand our facilities. Maybe that's a financing issue where we need to take on a loan. You can see the financing tab there. You know, here's projected cash, projected cash at year end. You can do cash flow assumptions. You can add a loan. You can add a line of credit. All sorts of things in here.